And now, Suspense. Your host is Autolite, and this is Rex Marshall speaking for the Autolite family. You know, friends, important news was made back in 1924 when the first Chrysler automobile was presented to the public. Well, important news is being made again in 1952 with the presentation of the new Chrysler automobile. Now, Chrysler is one of the distinguished members of the Autolite family. It's one of the leading manufacturers which use Autolite products as original equipment on cars, trucks, tractors, airplanes, and boats. Then there are the 96,000 Autolite distributors and dealers in the United States and thousands more in Canada and around the world. And of course, our family includes the nearly 30,000 men and women in 28 Autolite plants in this country and many more in foreign countries, as well as over 18,000 people who have invested a portion of their savings in Autolite. Well, tonight, that entire Autolite family gathers together to salute the Chrysler Corporation. And in just a little while, it'll be our pleasure to present the president of the Chrysler Division of Chrysler Corporation, Mr. D.A. Wallace, and hear his description of their new car for 1952. And now, Autolite presents Suspense. is Vienna. In 1913, with Europe on the verge of war, Vienna was seething with espionage and counter-espionage. The headquarters of the Austro-Hungarian Secret Service was located in the Steuben Ring. In an obscure part of this building were the offices of the Kunshop Stella. Send Carl away from Vienna. I must send him back to St. Petersburg. He's the key to my whole system. To organize all our agents in Russia, brilliantly. That worth sacrificing him for? Sacrifice? You talk as if I were sending my best friend to the gallows. Well, somehow that's what I feel. He has to go. He knows how important he is. Well. 
That's how information about France and England comes to Carl's work in St. Petersburg. Now, stop your pouting and let's go. Dropping me off to the ministry on your way home, darling. But of course. Thank you. Violet, sir. Violet. Pretty Violet. Thank you, sir. Violet. 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 Penny for your thoughts? Mr. Boss, I hate you a little because I gave up a car for you. You feel guilty, that's all, hmm? A little countess feels guilty because she's thrown over Carl, the aristocrat, and taken me, the country boy. That's for good reason. No, like any woman. Give her a choice between the, the weak and the strong, and she takes the, the strong, or at least what she thinks is strong. Oh, is that what are you talking about? Uh, here we are now. Huh? Then you uh, telephone me when you finish. Because I worry about you. You and all your secrets. Report on Major Romovsky, sir. It's in code. Did you break it down? Yes, sir. Here it is. <coughs> Romovsky, Russian attaché, working in Vienna. Dangerous. Digs out private scandals to wreck public lives. Responsible for suicide of French ambassador in Constantinople last year. Have we been watching him? Yes, sir. What's he up to? I'm afraid there isn't very much about the Major to date, sir. Didn't he go out? Stay all day at the Russian embassy? Uh, no, sir. He had breakfast absolutely alone at Stryker's Pavilion. Then he went across the square between the fountains. And then... What? Then, sir, he was lost. Lost? The truth is, sir, the Major's a very remarkable man. Who was the last person Ramovsky spoke to? Uh, uh, Waiter Stikers? No, sir, there was an old woman on the square. What old woman? She sold flowers. What kind of flowers? I don't know, sir. Violets, I think. Violets? Yes, sir, violets. Did you have the woman followed? We did not, sir, because she is known to us. Known? Uh... My dear lieutenant, in this work, no one is known to us. No one ever is known to us. Yes, sir. Not, not our friends, and our wives, but even ourselves. Yes, sir, I, I remember, sir. I, I realize that. Two things. One, you must be eternally suspicious of everyone. And two, you must see that no one has the slightest grounds to be suspicious of you. Yes, sir, I remember that, sir. You said it in your book. In our work. Any personal weakness of character can be disastrous, just as it was for the, the French ambassador. Hello. It's the sergeant at the gate, sir. He says there's a gentleman demanding to, to see you. Who is it? Who is it? 
Who? Romovsky, sir. Hello. Good morning, Colonel. Well, I really can't tell you what it's about. I can't. Except you might say it's a matter which could best be discussed over cigars. Over what? Cigars. Expensive cigars. Such as you bought tonight at dinner. <clears throat> Major, I, I have not the slightest idea what you are calling about. Why don't you try again tomorrow? Hmm? Perhaps at a more sober moment. Goodbye. Are you ill, sir? Was I ever ill? No, sir. Good night, sir. Would you mind if I walked a bit with you? I'm not a stranger in Vienna, and on such a foggy night. All right. A cigar, Colonel? Or perhaps you prefer your own. But you do smoke, don't you? I'm sure anyone who has worked such hours, and for so many years, and under such life and death pressures as you have, well, surely he must be permitted some minor indulgence. Even though, even though they might be habit forming, like certain cigars. I mean, for instance, I've heard of cigars that have opium put in them. Must be a dreadful habit, especially for a very important man. Could ruin his career if word got around. What do you want? To find out something from you. What? Your espionage in Russia is much too effective. I want the name of your chief agent there. Never! It should him. Give me that name or I'll wreck your life. Now go ahead. I will never give you that name. Well, if you won't give us that, then how about a bit of military information now and then? What information? We can work that out later. Just now, all I want is to be sure that is between us the basis for a reasonable rapprochement. Offhand, Colonel. Would you say there is a basis for an understanding? Yes. I believe I would. story, Betrayal in Vienna, shortly. Right now, it's our privilege to salute a distinguished member of the Autolite family, the Chrysler Division of Chrysler Corporation. And here is the president of the Chrysler Division, Mr. D.A. Wallace. Thank you and good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to appear on this program since Autolite has long provided some of the important parts for Chrysler automobiles. We are proud that Chrysler has received the Motor Trend Engineering Achievement Award for 1951. It has always pleased and gratified us to see our advances adopted in the entire automobile industry. We find it most exciting that our present Chrysler car has made three basic advances that will once again raise the standards of the industry. 
First of all, we are proud to have introduced the Chrysler Far Power Engine, now established as the finest automobile engine produced today. And many parts by Autolite, such as spark plugs and batteries, contribute to its great performance. This is the 180 horsepower V8 engine with the hemispherical combustion head, a design which engineers have long recognized as ideal. And we are proud to have introduced Chrysler Hydroguide, the first power steering mechanism ever offered in a passenger car. With Hydroguide doing four-fifths of the work of steering for you, it becomes easy to steer and park even the largest Chrysler without being aware of any exertion whatever. We think of it as a great safety feature, since it gives the driver complete, instant control of his car at all times. We are proud of another great Chrysler safety feature, too, power brakes. With these power-assisted brakes, the driver is able to stop the car smoothly with as little as one-third of the foot pressure formerly required. We believe these advances explain why Motor Trend, in presenting Chrysler with the Engineering Achievement Award, states, it is a major step ahead in American automotive history. It's hard to believe that a car can be so different to drive until you try it. That is why we would like to extend to you an invitation to drive the new Chrysler. Like any proud parent, we like to show off our amazing child. Thank you, and our thanks to Autolite for this opportunity to tell you about the Chrysler. Thank you, Mr. Wallace. The Autolite family wants to express its appreciation to you and to Chrysler for the many years of our association with Chrysler and Chrysler dealers everywhere. And now, the second act of Betrayal in Vienna, starring Claude Dauphin. Here's to Carl, who sat with us here three months ago. May he be safe in St. Petersburg. Why don't you drink? Oh, I'm sorry. Here's to Carl. Darling, what is it? There is trouble in the department. What kind? Serious trouble. Leaks to the Russian. Some spy right in our midst. Until I catch him, I will never get a moment's peace. Here is the peace. Sorry, sir. The general sent me out with a message. What's wrong now? The worst yet. The Russians have our plan for the invasion of Serbia. The general's in a terrible state, sir. He insists that every member of the office be re-examined. Of course I intend to. He really is desperate, sir. Don't you think I am? Excuse me, darling. I have to go to the ministry. Good night. Good night, Albert. The lieutenant will take you home. Violet. Violet, sir. Violet, sir. Violet. Violet. No. Violet. Violet, sir. Colonel Violet. Violet for a lady, Colonel. Tonight at 9.15, drive through the alley behind the opera house. Violet! Violet! Oh, Violet! Violet! Would you mind very much if we left now? I think I should get back, too. Of course not. Not at all. Oh, the general must have left a cigar. Here, you'd better take this. No, uh, no, you have it. Well, thank you. But Major, you're asking too much. I am in no position to know what the Germans intend. Exactly, but I shall see to it that you will know. No, 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 nothing more out of me. Not a thing. I'm afraid I'm already a suspect. That's what I'm going to take care of. I'm going to give you the name of our chief agent here. He works in your department. What? Who? Oscar Langson, the telegraph operator. Langson? You will arrest him. That will take the suspicion off you. Then I will furnish you with such, such minute information that when you bring him to trial, you can make a hero out of yourself. 
and everyone, Emperor, Crown, Prince, and the generals, all will have the greatest confidence in you. But what if something goes wrong? Oh, my dear Colonel, what can possibly go wrong with you as prosecutor? After the trial, we'll meet the top of the cathedral. Oscar Langton, you've been spying against the fatherland for five years, gathering and selling secrets vital to the very existence of our beloved Emperor. Step by step, Colonel Reddle has traced for the General your every move. From the very first day, from January 11, 1911, step by step, I've traced every secret you've sold, every wretched sou you have collected. Do you admit it? Oscar Lang, do you admit that every word of mine is true? Do you? Yes. Yes, Colonel, I do. But how could you know? How could you find out these infinite points? Let the prisoner refrain from any questions. Do you know what you're going to pay for this? But, Colonel, why should you hang me? I wasn't the only one. What about Major Kirsten? He's just as guilty. Silence! And Gerhard Acht! And there's another man, somebody in the story to... Silence! Do you hear me? Silence! I'll ask the questions. See that you answer only the questions I ask. But, Colonel Reddle, if there's someone else in this department, surely we should hear his name. Your Honor, I never knew who he was. Except in code, he was referred to as the Poppy. Poppy? I believe he used opium. Colonel, it shouldn't be hard now to find your man. No, General. It shouldn't be long now. But I couldn't control him. I didn't know he was going to tell everything. You've done Russia irreparable damage. You've exposed our entire network. You've made a great hero out of yourself, but you've ruined me. And now you're going to pay for it. But Major Hart... Colonel, I want the name of your chief agent in St. Petersburg. No. Colonel, last time I asked, only your reputation was at stake. This time it's your life. You'll be shot. to die in disgrace, lose everything, the palace, and the garden, and the countess. What's his name? St. Petersburg. There is an art dealer across from the opera. He goes by the name of Kikovic. Is he a close friend of yours? Very close. That's a pity. Will be shot? Oh, yes. Right away. I'll put it on the wireless now. I should think he'll be shot within two hours. Goodbye, Maiden. By the way, Colonel, now that you've given me your friend's name, I might as well tell you that you'd be caught in any case. How's that? We've just found out that that old flower woman... Yes? Well, she works on both sides. But even so, if you move fast, you ought to be able to reach Switzerland. Don't feel bad. Your wife will understand. Goodbye, Colonel. But Trinka, the, the Russians may not shoot him. Even if they do so, well, why is death should come between us? It's a war. We're in a war. Sit down. Have your coffee. Look, we, we could go to Italy. I've been sending money there. I, I, I had a great deal put away. We, we, we could leave right now, just as we are. Huh? By train? With every station full of your agents? No, we, we'll take Joseph. He can drive us all night. And then tomorrow, the train for Switzerland. It would work. Don't you think it would work? Yes, it would work. But I'm not going. Why? Because of Garland? Because of all of us. 
Esto. Can you ever forgive me? No, never. Never you. Never me. find it hard to believe. Incidentally, when did you put a flower woman onto me? When you told me not to trust anyone. Will there be a court martial? No. The general wants it quiet. It's going to be suicide because of Carl. You don't wish to live without your best friend. As a matter of fact, I don't. May I have your revolver? Don't worry, lest the cabbie be upset. He won't be. He's one of your agents, too. later, war broke out. The Serbian army hurled back the Austrians. The attack of the Central Powers was thrown off balance. The German drive faltered, and the Allies held on the Marne. And so, in some measure, the course of history was altered by this betrayal in Vienna. So we come to the end of another story of suspense, Betrayal in Vienna, brought to you by Autolite. Tonight, friends, we had the privilege of saluting a distinguished member of the Autolite family, the Chrysler Division of Chrysler Corporation. It was our particular pleasure to have had as our special guest, Mr. D.A. Wallace, president of the Chrysler Division, and to hear his description of the new Chrysler for 1952. And now, this is Rex Marshall speaking for the Autolite family, inviting you and your family to join us again next week at the same time when Autolite brings you another story of suspense. Mitchell, a story well calculated to keep you in suspense. Be sure to listen to Suspense each Monday night on your CBS radio station. This is the CBS Television Network.